Hello everyone, my name is Bethlehem Gronenberg. I'm a PhD student in software engineering at the Department of Computer Science of North Dakota State University, NDSU, located in Fargo, North Dakota. Today, I'll be presenting you a paper I co-authored with my graduate school colleagues, Joshua Denayo, Anusha Ngurti, Nariz Rifat, Sarim Zafar, Mohammed Sawar, and our professor, Professor Brian Slater. The paper is titled Bridging the K-12 Computer Science Education Gap by Integrating Conventional Materials with an Immersive Virtual Environment. During the presentation, I will highlight the purpose of the paper, the unique and novel approach to a graduate certificate in computer science education for in-service high school educators. We'll skim through the background, discuss the design issues and details of the implementation as identified in the program. And we'll conclude with the future ideas for consideration. This new graduate certificate program is designed to address multifaceted issues. Among them is the growing demand for computer science graduates as technological innovation and advancement in science are fueled by computer science. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the computer information technology field is expected to grow by 12% from 2018 to 2028. That is faster than the average growth of all other occupations. Close to 550,000 new jobs are projected to be added in the areas of cloud computing, the collection and storage of big data, predictive analysis with artificial intelligence, information security, and much more similar computing jobs. Heeding this need, the North Dakota Department of Public Instruction has recently published the K-12 Computer Science State Standard to be implemented by the school district. This graduate program will serve as a statewide resource and help prepare educators gain knowledge in the computational design thinking field. The third purpose is to help alleviate the acute shortage of skilled high school educators in computer science. According to the survey result of a paper entitled Promulgating Computer Science in High School Education, only 22% of the teachers of the 30 school districts across North Dakota, the state, currently teach courses in CS. 85 of the teachers feel percent 85 percent of the teachers feel they needed training to teach computer science effectively and 55 percent of the teachers would complete an 18 credit certificate to teach computer science so there is the need and the desire to um, get the skill in um, computer science this graduate certificate in computer science education is primarily aimed at high school teachers in need of credentials to teach dual credit course courses in this in their schools as well as ap computer science instructors this program consists of six three credit courses for a total requirement of 18 credits aimed at preparing for teaching high school computer science the course are selected for content which cover the essential core concept of computer science and how to teach them. The key feature distinguishing this graduate certificate program at NDSU from other online offerings is the decision to integrate conventional materials either developed in-house or provided by a textbook publisher with an immersive virtual environment IVE for education. The advancement of technological products and services has changed the way we live, work and interact with each other. Computer science related education in K-12 has become a necessity. Thus, there is a growing need for instructor to teach these classes. 
Waiting till college to learn the basic foundational principle could mean missed opportunities in a diverse array of careers within computer science. So support for K-12 academic and computer science teacher in designing interdisciplinary project-based instruction and assignments that engage students in applying literacy, math, and computational thinking skills to solve problems hence become critical to simulate interest and graduate students with the right skills. So using distance learning and non-traditional classes to prepare educators for 21st century skill sets. The Valley City State University, VSSU, which is in North Dakota, hosts a system called MU Educational Platform, MEP which is a virtual museum with a web-based interface intended for use in distance learning and non-traditional classes. The MEP Museum is divided into wings that are devoted to particular programming languages, each populated with an array of interactive objects and agents that facilitate an active learning experience. The wings are divided into virtual lessons and exhibits which students browse through in a self-paced exploration. Lessons are interconnected clusters of related course content. Exhibits are interactive demonstrations of the course content, which the students are encouraged to manipulate as part of the learning process. The MEP Museum is designed to both deliver content that would normally be obtained from a lecture or a textbook, yet also have many of the attractive qualities of games and other learner center activities. The basic components are rooms with exits, containers and players. Moves support the object management and interplayer messaging that is required for multiplayer games. And at the same time, provide programming language for customization of the environment. For example, a lesson covers one distinct topic. It does not need to exhaust the topic, but should be self-contained. Lessons are usually hierarchical, where a lesson may contain smaller lessons. A typical lesson has A, an introduction that explains the need for the topic, B, the content material, C, an exercise motivating the student to use the new knowledge, and D, some, of the, some type of assessment. A code machine, sometimes called code of applet, contains a piece of a program, which it will display, explain, or trace what is happening at runtime, including any variables changed. When a student completes either an explanation or a trace of a code in a code machine, it is recorded, giving the student credit for using the machine. In addition to the virtual museum, the course also uses presentation software to bridge the gap between the teaching process and the presentation as a teaching medium. Presentation software can be a great publishing tool, the ability to integrate words, visuals, and other interactive elements like links and videos are key of the attributes. First, it's a practical alternative to the traditional method of teaching. It's a tool you use every day and will work for most of your communication needs. And it has ability to guide and visually engage the student. Presentation software is per pervasive. Uh, many people use it to create concepts and strategies. So it, it will use for knowledge acquisition for students. Nowadays, social media is a powerful tool and as per a survey in the European Union, around 85 to 90% of students use it. It's a very powerful platform for real-time informal communication like discussing current work, idea sharing, etc. The instructor can use it also to post course updates and encourage discussions. 
also it can stream live lectures and instance messaging. The community of educators who are in the certificate program will expand uh, each time in keeping all the old and the new uh, from um, year to year. And this can lead to sharing resources and knowledge, Q&A and bond amongst the community of learners. The instructor and learner should be aware of the focus of studies, privacy, and authenticity of news and information on social media, however. The course incorporates also portfolios, which allows professionals to display their achievements and projects in a well-organized and easy-to-view structure. Many software developers and computer scientists use GitHub, for example, as a primary host site for their professional portfolios. Portfolios are easy to view by progressive companies and organizations and easy for the owner to update. In an academic settings, it's a collection of work that exhibits compilation of academic work, progress, achievement, and skills. It will be laid out, the design will be laid out using Blackboard as a guide to illustrate proper portfolio design. Blackboard supplies, it has built-in uh, components that will assist the construction of high quality portfolios. Students will use that to learn about the crucial components within the portfolio, such as page, pages, sections, artifacts, as well as descriptions for each section. Blackboard will be used by students to construct and review portfolios. Students can reflect on their academic journeys, achievements, student skills in a centralized document, while teachers can use it to document the materials that collectively suggest the scope and quality of a professor's teaching performances. Selection of the right presentation software tool is essential to engage students in digital learning. As such, every presentation will embed accessibility features for visually impaired, such as captions, and be in compliance with a computer a screen reader called JAWS with text-to-speech uh, output. Articulate Presenter 360 is one of the many tools available in the markets. It adds a, var a variety of useful features to the PowerPoint slides, such as audio narration and quiz integration. Choosing an appropriate portfolio for any given context is a crucial skill. The teachers as students of the course will create portfolios on the NDSU Blackboard and evaluate their these portfolios. Um, these exercises will give students experience both in building portfolios as well as evaluating them. Blackboard portfolio tools will guide students through the setup of the sections, artifacts, layout, and organization of their portfolios. After completion, students can download a copy of their portfolios for later use, such as showcasing their skills and accomplishments for future employers. Portfolio tools in Blackboard will help you in creating the portfolio where you can organize the collection of uh, artifacts such as achievement certificates, project done previously, etc. Further, portfolios can be uh, shared as evidence for your skills to a potential employer or future reference. The MEP IVE, which stands for Integrated Virtual Environment, is vast and comprehensive with over 100 lessons and a well-documented system for using and maintaining the environment. The total number of lessons, rooms, exhibit rooms, quiz rooms, and other content exceeds 3,000 objects. The course being developed in CSI 642, Problem Solving in Computer Science Education, it is intended to be a completely online course offered during the summer to accommodate in-service teachers, 
The textbook for the course is Problem Solving and Programming Concepts by Sp Sprankel and Harvard, the 2012 edition. The course covers 12 chapters during the 12 weeks of NDSU summer session, although being completely online, it's self-paced with no nothing to prevent a student from racing through the material in less than less time than 12 weeks. Despite it being online and self-paced, it is a schedule that describes what a student should accomplish each week in order to complete the course. Each week, the student is instructed to check for activity on the North Dakota Computer Science Education Group Facebook page, read one or two chapters in the textbook, review one or two of the PowerPoint summaries of the assigned chapters, take one or two 20 question online quizzes for the assigned chapters, explore a lesson on the P land, which is the programming land of MPP, MEP, and take the associated online quiz. So this is an example of the portal of the virtual environment for a lesson on switch statement, including the switch code machine, which we will see in the next slide. So this is a screenshot of the portal for the switch code machine that lists, traces, and explain the snippet of code, which is the switch statement. Um, on the top yeah, are several commands that you can use to um, output to output a sample of code um, to show and explain each line of code of that output and do some other things with it. After a few introductory and background units, the PLAND MEP material closely aligns with the textbook material. For example, week nine covers chapter 11 on linked lists and is associated with the, the PLAND MEP lesson and quiz, such as list basics and list basic quiz rooms. To complete the list basics lesson on PLAND MEP, the student must visit and absorb the material on the 15 connected text exhibits. List class structure, a list node class, a list class, and it goes on until um, the doubly linked lists. Other examples include chapter 7 of the textbook, Problem Solving with Loops, associated with the PLAND MEP lesson and quiz, Loop Anatomy and Loop Properties quiz room. There are over 200 of the code machines discussed above, divided into three categories the syntax lesson, the algorithm, and the technical lessons. The syntax lessons include declarations, the form of statements, etc. The algorithms lessons include sorting, searching, uh, and accessing. Technical lessons include demonstrating the, the log function, etc. Code machines are currently being converted from deprecated Java applets to JavaScript. It is recommended to set up both qualitative and quantitative um, studies in the future to evaluate our proposed methodology and track progress um, and um, the success of the course. We'll be evaluating the comprehensive portfolios We'll also incorporate a portfolio evaluation at the end of our course for assessment. We'll also need to evaluate the uh, uh, Valley City um, University's MEP system if it causes a hindrance in the learning process because it's a text-based interface um, might cause an increase in cognitive overload. So. Um, to 
plan and design to build the graphic user interface on top of the existing MEP to reduce that cognitive uh, overload. Thank you.